Hallelujah. So good to see each one of us in God's house this morning. This morning, all of us sang the song, The Chain Breaker. Amen. All of us sang that with great uh, desire in our heart. I just want to ask you, how many of us sitting here really want to see some chains broken by the Lord today? Amen. It could be finances. It could be relationship. It could be a sickness. All of us are coming here with something in our heart. And God has placed in my heart this message, which was preached by my father-in-law in 2006. Amen. We will be looking at it in a slightly different way. And the name of the message is The Breaker's Anointing. Hallelujah. The Breaker's Anointing. Some of us may have heard this message in different forms. But this morning, God has given me an experiential knowledge, which means God the Breaker came into my life and helped me overcome something because of which I'm standing here today. And the moment he came and helped me overcome that issue, I saw a breakthrough which had not been happening for a very long time within the next 24-hour period. God wants to do the same thing in our life this morning. And therefore, we're going to look at what Breaker's anointing is all about. In Micah chapter 2 verses 13, God is being described as a breaker. Hallelujah. God is being described as a breaker. If you look at the first verse, which says, The breaker has come up before us. Who is this breaker who has come up before us? It is not an angel. It is not somebody we do not know. But the breaker is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the living God himself, who is the breaker, who goes in front of his people to break those places which are impossible to break. Hallelujah. His name is El Shaddai, the Almighty God. His name is Jehovah Jireh, the Provider. His name is Jehovah Rapha, your healer. His name is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord who gives peace. His name is Emmanuel, the Lord God, who is with his people this morning. Hallelujah. Praise you, King of Kings. Uh, the breaker is none other than Jesus Christ of Nazareth who goes ahead of us as the battering ram who removes obstacles in front of you. The story comes uh, when the nation of Israel was in captivity and this word was given by the prophet Micah unto the King Cyrus. This is talking about how the gates of the city would be broken through by the power of the living God. And this morning, uh, we are going to look at the breaker's anointing. Uh, many of us have come here this morning seeking a breakthrough in those areas of life which you have been uh, struggling with for many, many years. Uh, and I believe by the end of the service, as you understand this message, as you begin to apply this message into your life, and as we come down and anoint you with the anointing oil, the power of the breaker, the breaker's anointing, the anointing of the breaker would come through in your life uh, and you would begin to see change immediately to the glory of the living God this morning. Hallelujah. Praise you, King of Kings. This morning, why is this breaker's anointing important in your life? Because it helps you to break through the storms of life. Because it helps you to break through sickness. Because it helps you to break through sorrow. Because it helps you to break through the chains that are putting you down, keeping you back. The chain breaker this morning is breaker's anointing. Is the breaker himself. Is the breaker himself. The chain breaker. The breaker himself is this morning in this house waiting to deliver his people from the chains that are binding you. If you look at... Psalms chapter 94 verses 20 and 21. One of the reasons that we need to break through, one of the reasons why we need to have this breaker's anointing is if we don't allow God to have fellowship, if we don't allow God to be on the throne of our life, then all other things uh, which are from the world would come and make their throne in our life. Uh, when something else other than God comes and makes a throne on your life, uh, then you are not on the path of victory, but then you are on the broad path and you may fall at any moment. But the moment you allow the King of Kings and Lord of Lords to come and make his throne on your life uh, and nothing else, uh, you are going to go ahead with victory and purpose. Uh, Hallelujah. Praise you, King of Kings. Uh, the real reason why you need breaker's anointing in your life is to help you overcome the grief, is to help you overcome the chain, is to help you overcome the sickness, is to help you overcome all the issues of life that you've been going through. This morning, uh, we will look at a few examples uh, of breaker's anointing. But before we get there, 
all of us know the story of Moses. When Moses was called by God to lead the nation of Israel out, God said, I will go ahead and bring my people out from the clutches of the Pharaoh. But even then, Moses had to do his part in believing that word and in applying it and in going and in standing in front of Pharaoh. This morning, while God is saying to his people who are in evangel assembly and those watching online, do not be confused, those watching online, I am the breaker and I will come and break through in the problems and the difficulties and the issues that you have. But you and I, just like Moses, need to believe this word and we need to do something to see God putting his word into action in your life. Hallelujah. And that is what we are going to learn about. Praise you, Jesus. This morning, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, even as we look at God's word, Colossians 2.10. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The verses before this says that everything that was made was made by Jesus Christ. Every principality, every power, everything that you see in the world was made by Jesus Christ. And when he went to the cross, he destroyed every principality, every power, every power of darkness, every sin was overthrown on that cross of Calvary. And Jesus Christ is the head of over all principalities and power, is the breaker who's going to go through into your life and who's going to lead you ahead in the plans and purposes of God that he has for you because Jesus crushed the principality and power on that cross because Jesus crushed sin on that cross this breaker and this breaker's anointing would go ahead in front of you even as you ask this breaker to come into your life let us look at few examples uh, where the breaker's anointing was very visible in God's word 2 Samuel 5 6 David and Jebusites now this was a city that they were very confident that David would not be able to take up there were many years where the nation of Israelite used to go and hit against this nation, but they could never conquer the city. And therefore, right from the time, throughout the time of the judges, into the time of David, they always used to feel the Jebusites, that nothing can come against a city, nothing can take us down. And therefore, when David and his army came against the city, they started making fun of David. They said, David, you will never be able to take the city. David, in fact, the lame and the blind who are there in our city would be able to take care of you and would defeat you. That was the confident, uh, confidence that the Jebusites had. But God the breaker gave David a plan. And the plan was that there was a tunnel going from the bottom into the city which used to take the water supply up to the city. And the Lord God said, David, I want you to send people through that tunnel into the city. And as you reach the city, I will give you that city and you will take over the city and you will rule over that city. And therefore, the breaker's anointing went in front of David and something that the world said was impossible to happen. That day it happened and David was lifted up because the breaker's anointing was going up ahead of him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In 2 Samuel 5.20, there is another talk another story about David and the Philistines. David and the Philistines, they had a long history together. And as the Philistines used to come against them, a mighty army of the Philistines came across uh, in a place called as Baal Perazim. Uh, and what happened? Uh, the Lord said, you go ahead, David. I, the breaker's anointing, will take over. And what happened in the story? What does it say? It says, the Lord has broken forth upon my enemies before me as the breach of waters. I don't know if anybody has seen on TV when a dam bursts. I don't know if somebody has seen on TV when tsunami comes. But when the water comes with power, it just washes away everything that is there. And David is saying, this is the place where the sovereign Lord was the breaker's anointing. And he came and he washed away my enemies even in front of me as the breach of waters. Hallelujah. Something that the world said was impossible was achieved because God the breaker took interest in that situation. And he went ahead and he broke through that situation. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Uh, another example that you can think of is Esther. Praise you, King. Praise you, Lord. Esther, the little girl who came into that place in captivity. Her mother and father had died, and she was in captivity. But then she was lifted up by the hand of God through Mordecai, and she became Queen Esther in the palace. Most of the time, this does not work. Simple reason being, many people who go through traumas in their life, 
they continue to focus on the trauma which happened in the past they continue to have the defeatist thinking that they have they continue to look back into the past and therefore chances are that 90% of people who go through such trauma continue to remain in that poverty continue to remain in that difficulty continue to remain in that place but in this case because of the power of the living god because the breaker's anointing was upon that child because she understood the power of god of nation of israel she rose up to that challenge and therefore from being a captive she became queen esther who ruled the world and who saved jews from annihilation because of which jesus christ the king of kings could come through the nation of israel Hallelujah king of kings lord of lords the breaker's anointing is so much required today you may be somebody who's thinking i'm too old i'm too young there is an impossible situation in my heart there is a impossible situation in my mind but this morning god is saying i am the breaker i am the breaker and i the breaker's anointing would go in front of you and break through that place which you thought would not work i will break through like the flood of waters i will break through like the flood of waters says the living god Hallelujah praise you Jesus king of kings lord of lords thank you creator but this morning like i said moses god told moses i will take out the nation of israel from the pharaoh but moses had to do two things one he had to believe in that and two he had to do some action and this morning if god is telling you you are come here with some difficulty with some issue with some kind of a chain that is binding you and you are listening to God's word this morning and God is speaking to you then you got to do two things one you got to believe in his word and two you got to do some action and that is what we are going to do now the main question that you got to ask if you want the breaker's anointing to work in your life is who is ruling the throne of your life what is the main power main driving force in your life who is on the throne of your life is it jesus or is it many other things for example there are times when i speak to people they say more than jesus that means what is the thing that is driving your life what is the thing that is driving your life and your family's life hallelujah praise you king who this morning is on the throne of your life for some people it is a cell phone Hallelujah everything is driven by the cell phone can't wait to come back from office to go and see that serial can't wait to come back from office to see that soap can't wait to come back from office to play that game can't wait to come back from school to log on to that who is controlling your life is your cell phone controlling your life Hallelujah thank you Jesus or this morning is it the job that you have controlling your life Praise you Lord you need to go to your job you need to work you don't have time 12 hours is the time that you have but you'll work 16 hours and you don't have time for family you don't have time for friends you don't have time for God who is controlling your life who is driving the decisions in your life what is first priority in your life who is on the throne of your life for some people it is very simple no complicated it is lust no complication whole day whole night it is lust including uh, some of us watching online including uh, in the global church there are many members uh, who sit down uh, it's very simple the only thing that drives them is lust from the morning from the coming of the sun to its going down uh, they may be in god's church they may be praying raising their hands uh, but the driving force in their life is lust uh, some people the driving force in their lives is money uh, some people the driving force in their life is greed uh, what this morning evangel family is the driving force in your life who is on the throne of your life is it jesus christ of nazareth the son of the living god or is it your job is it your family is it your money is it your finances is it your property is it emotions is it self respect what in the name of jesus is driving your life and is on the throne of your life this morning if you want the breakers anointing to come through into your life uh, this morning you got to ask god god i don't know what this preacher is talking about it is just going over my head i have no clue what he's saying uh, but since he's shouting his mouth out on that stage uh, please tell me lord what is on the throne of my life uh, please show me lord what is on the throne of my life is it you god or is it something else that this preacher man is saying uh, hallelujah thank you jesus uh, the identification of what is your driving force uh, who's on the throne of your life is step number 1 to ensure that the breakers anointing can come through uh, hallelujah you need to identify what is there even as i'm preaching some of you have been thinking about it but we're going to say a short prayer now even now we are going to ask the holy spirit 
to show what is the driving force in our life. Who is sitting on the throne of our life? Lord, is it you? Is it somebody else? And I believe as we continue to go through this message, God will show you. As the worship team will come in sometime and you continue to ask God, God will show you as he showed me, as he showed many others, what is, who is on the throne of your life? Hallelujah. Please close your eyes, Evangel Assembly, for a moment, those watching online. Please repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, please show me, Lord. Who is on the throne of my life? Is it you, Lord? Or is it money? Is it my job? Is it my family? Is it my past experience? Is it something else? Please show me, Lord, what is on the throne of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. I believe as we come to a close of this message in some time and the worship team will come up and start singing and as you begin to commune with God and as you begin to ask God this question, he will clearly show you what is the ruling power in your life, who's on the throne of your life and moment you show you that, you will begin to understand why is it that years and years of experience you had with God but still you go down the hill every other time, still you have a problem with finances, still you have a problem with your health, still you have problem with relationship who or what is the driving power sitting on the throne of your life this morning hallelujah king of kings lord of lords Lord. so this morning we're going to identify who's sitting on the throne of your life simple for some of the people like i said money lust what else all of those things in the world cell phone now step number one is to identify who's sitting on the throne of your life number two you need to know what are the things you can do to get that removed. What are the things that you can do to ensure that Jesus Christ comes and takes his rightful place on that throne? Amen? How do you break through? Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. James 1, 6, please. Amen. The first thing that you need to do, if you want to dethrone whatever is there on your life and enthrone Jesus Christ back, simple. Dethrone whatever is there in your life, enthrone Jesus. In fact, this message as preached by my father-in-law, this could be the second most important message after the salvation message that you heard. Because many Christians today, even though they have salvation, but they have no power, they are still in the same difficulty. They are still going through the same issues. Why? Because on the throne of their life, it is not Jesus who is sitting. It is something else which is sitting on the throne of their life. And therefore, from the throne of their life flows everything out. All the actions, all the drives, all the emotions come from the ruling authority over your life. You need to spend time today, even as the worship team will come in about five minutes, uh, to ask God to identify. And once we identify, we're going to ask God for repentance. Uh, Lord, I'm sorry that I put that person on the throne of my life. Uh, everything drives from that person. That person sits and stands. I need to do everything to ensure everything is okay. If that person says, don't go to work, I won't go to work. If that person says, come here, I come here. Lord, it is the past experience that I had which is controlling me. I repent, Lord Jesus. I take that out of the throne of my life and I invite you in, Lord, to sit on the throne of my life. No more will I allow my past experience to sit on the throne of my life and control my emotion. No more. I verbalize it. I speak it out. I speak it out. I speak it out. Spiritual warfare is done through your speech. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Son of the living God, said that in Psalms 91 when I took you through. Uh, your weapons of warfare is through your mouth. Your spiritual warfare happens through your mouth. And this morning we are going to repent in some time of allowing something else other than Jesus to be first place and sitting on the throne of your life. And as you repent, things will begin to change and you will begin to see the breakthrough that you've been longing for. Hallelujah. Praise you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord. Some of the things that you have to remember. For some, I'm being very honest, the breakthrough will happen the moment you identify and you ask for repentance. I have experienced it. But for some, it is a little bit more drawn out procedure. Why it happens, I don't know. But for those of you who is going to take time, you need to do these things. Number one, you need to be certain, James 1, 6, that Jesus Christ is going to deliver you from that, number one. Number two, you need to have submission. What does that mean? Many a time in our life, things are going crazy, right? It's not going in the direction you want it to go. But many a time, Despite you being correct, despite you being correct, right? Many a time things are going awry. Many a time things are going wrong. 
what happens? Uh, we have Jesus in our life, but still, like the song says, we still have our hands on the wheel. This morning, God is saying, enough, you have controlled that steering wheel. Enough, you have done in handling that car. Enough, you have tried to control that steering wheel. Take off your hands from that steering wheel and give me control of that steering wheel. You may think that I will take you into a ditch because a ditch is coming, but I am King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I created you. I have plans to prosper you, to give you a bright hope and a bright future. I will take you through. Get off the control of the steering wheel to my hands, says the living God this morning. Submission is something that is so important. Certainty, James 1, 6, it is something that is so important. Bold action is important, especially for those who are fighting against habits. Now, you may say, I don't know anybody. Well, don't be surprised. Uh, the body of Christ is not perfect. Like I'm not perfect, you're also not perfect. There are many sitting here watching online who are struggling with habits. Now, if you are struggling with habits, and if you want the breaker to come and do something in your life, Number one you need to do is to take bold action. What does bold action mean? You are an alcoholic sitting here right now. Amen? Watching me online. What is it? You drink five pegs in a day. Praise God. And you've been asking God, help me God, help me God, help me God. But what do you do? From five pegs you will say, slowly. That's what it says. No cold turkey. That's the thing that is used. Slowly I will bring it down. From five I will bring it to four. You're still drunk. From four, I will bring it to three. You're still drunk. From three, I will bring it to two. Then what happens? Before, I was taking 30 ml, 30 ml, 30 ml. Now when it came to two, I will put 60 ml so that I can compensate. Hallelujah. God is saying, if you are in the clutches of habits, smoking, drinking, doing drugs, some of us have experienced drugs in this place and watching online, God is saying, you need to take bold action. You need to take bold action this morning. Yeah. You need to take bold action this morning, which means uh, if you're taking five, go directly to zero. You can't have a situation where you're going from five, four, three, two, one. That will never happen. Praise God. I've seen this. I've seen it with people whom I know firsthand. It has never happened and it will never happen. Hallelujah. Moses had to go to Pharaoh. You have to take a stand today. Lord. All the scientific literature says, if I go cold turkey, I will break into sweat. My hands will start shivering. I will see double image. Whatever it is, let it happen. But today is the day I break my addiction. Today is the day I stop seeing pornographic material on the net without my wife knowing. You need to take that stand. Because if you don't take that stand, and if you don't kick out something else which is occupying the throne of your life, then no matter what you do, salvation is guaranteed because Jesus is in your heart. You ask for forgiveness, but you're not going to see the power of God. You're not going to see the breakthrough of God. You're not going to see the abundant life of God because the controlling factor is not Jesus, but it is that thing which is driving you. Thank you, Lord. True praise. That is something I want to touch on even as I close. Praise God. True praise is something that we as a body of Christ have not used much. Praise God. Praying and fasting, all of us do that. We need to increase that. These are things which will help you to come out through that issues that you have. Praying and fasting helps you. Tithing helps you because Malachi says, when you give, I will open up the heavens. If somebody is not tithing, please ensure you give your tithes in because God is saying, I will open up heavens in front of you and give you abundant life. Praying in tongues is something that helps uh, to help you dislodge the power upon your life. Uh, praying in tongues. Uh, Paul said, I pray in tongues more than anybody else. Uh, but praising God, that is something that we as a body of Christ need to do more. We have many instances in the Old and New Testament. Jehoshaphat, when he went for war with the nations uh, against him, what did he do? Instead of sending the artillery, instead of sending the infantry, instead of sending uh, the soldiers on foot, what did he do? He sent uh, his worship team ahead. Hallelujah. The soldiers all behind and the worship team in front. Uh, Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And even as the worship team went in front, praising God, what happened? The breaker came in. The breaker's anointing came in. And he sowed confusion in the enemy's camp. And the enemy began to run here and there. And there came through a breakthrough that was never seen before. That is because of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That is a breaker's anointing. When did it happen? When you praise. The next time when you're going through troubles, the next time when you're going through difficulty, pray in tongues, shababa, reba, hoba, reba. But also remember, praise you, Jesus. So many times you helped me come through a situation. Praise you, Jesus. So many times you destroyed the enemy. Praise you, Jesus. You brought me through victoriously. Praise you, King. Praise you, King. Praise you, King. Praise you, King. Put on that praise music. Praise you, King. 
Hallelujah, King of Kings. You got to do something this morning, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Evangel Assembly family. And when you do all these things, when you repent, and how do you repent? With your mouth. And what else do you do? Praying and fasting. Tithing. What else do you do? Praising God. Being certain He will do something. Taking bold action, which means cold turkey. I don't know who this message is for. But this thing is coming and again and again in my mind. Cold turkey, absolutely, from five to zero. I don't know if you're watching online. Maybe it is something else. You need to take bold action today. Even as you do all of that, what happens in the throne of your life? If it was some other power that was there, maybe it is fear. Praise the King of Kings. Maybe it is shame. Many people, it is shame from past experience. Many people, it is fear from past experiences that is ruling over the throne of their life. And God is going to destroy that fear this morning. God, the breaker surrounding, is going to destroy that shame which is guiding some people who are sitting here. That shame which is from the devil is will be removed today in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords. Thank you, Creator. And as all this happens, what happens as a result of all this? When breakthrough happens, when there is a spiritual breakthrough, people of the living God, when something inside changes, physical breakthrough happens. Physical breakthrough happens. Manifestation in your job happens. Increase in blessing happens. Renewal happens. Revival happens. Joy happens. Removal of barrier happens. You will be able to see the manifestation of your internal breakthrough in your external environment as you begin to do this. As you begin to come to God for this. Praise you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Even as you stand, Evangel family, even as the breaker's anointing is here, even as God the breaker is here, King of Kings. Evangel family, ask God. Ask God. What is or who is on the throne of my life? What is or who's on the throne of my life? As God, Evangel family, because this is the most important thing that you can do to ensure your Jesus Christ breaks through in every area of your life. Who is on the throne of your life? Evangel family, this morning, some of us already know what's on the throne of our life. God has revealed it even as you started the message. Some of us knew that before you came in today. Some of us, God revealed to it at the beginning of the message. And some, very few, God has spoken now. What we need to do next is ask God for repentance. Because there can be nothing other than Jesus Christ on the throne of our life. Hallelujah. So please repeat this prayer after me, Evangel family, from the depths of your heart. So that the breaker, the breaker's anointing, the breaker who wants to give you abundant life will go through your life. And see you victorious. We'll break those chains of brass and iron over your life and see you victorious Lord Jesus I thank you Lord that you help me see what is on the throne of my life Lord Jesus I'm sorry Lord that it is a person or it's a thing it is money it's greed it's lust it's finances whatever is the issue Lord I'm sorry Lord I kept that on the throne of my life I'm sorry Lord I have kept that. Come on, repeat after me, Evangel family. I'm sorry, Lord. I have kept that on the throne of my life. Lord Jesus, I dethrone that. I dethrone that from the throne of my life. And I give you full charge. And I enthrone you, Lord Jesus. And I put you on the throne, Lord Jesus. I give you full control over my life, Lord Jesus. You are the Lord of my life. You are the king over my life. No principality. No principality. No power. Other than you. Can be in the throne of my life. I welcome you Lord Jesus on the throne of my life. I thank you Lord for your power. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.